I had a student send me a question regarding problem 3-33. What I have here is I have the problem set up in such a way that we can kind of analyze it from a couple of different perspectives. But what we see here is Delphi company has developed a new product that will be marketed for the first time next year. The product will have a variable cost of $21 per unit, although marketing department estimates that 49,000 units could be produced at $41 per unit, Delphi's management has allocated only enough manufacturing capacity to produce a maximum of 35,000 units. The fixed costs associated with the new product are budgeted at $630,000 for the year, and Delphi's tax rate is 40%. So this is a variation of the uh, break-even point analysis where we're doing a cost profit analysis but what we have here is we have the additional variable associated with a after-tax profit. What I have set up here is I have it set up in such a way that what we're actually looking at is a break-even point but I have the table set up in such a way that we can actually change this in terms of calculating additional variables. So what you see here is that the input variable is going to be our after-tax profit. When we think about the after-tax profit, which is the end result, we need to consider the pre-tax profit. So what I have here is the pre-tax profit. And what you see in the formula is in the formula is we have E16, which is the after-tax profit, divided by 1 minus the tax rate. Now, we can go through the mathematics of this in another uh, video, but essentially the calculation is to get the pre-tax profit is we look at the after-tax profit divided by 1 minus the tax rate. And that's what we have in this formula right here. So in this case, we're looking at an after-tax profit of zero. Therefore, our pre-tax profit is going to be obviously zero also. But just kind of to make the point here, if our after or our pre-tax profit $100 and our tax rate is $40, then our after-tax is simply equals 100 times the remainder, which is 60%. So that seems pretty obvious here. Now, the way I have this set up here, and again, disregard the other variables here, is that if I did the pre-tax profit of $60, is what you see here is that the calculation for the after-tax profit is $100. Okay, so that goes beyond what we're talking about here. I'll just turn this to zero, and we've got this. That's how we look at this from the perspective of our pre-tax and our after-tax. And the point is that the problems identify the after-tax. What we need to do is we need to identify the pre-tax profit to actually complete the calculation. So let's go through the formulas uh, as we see here. So what we have is that we have a sales price of $41. We have a variable cost of $21. Therefore, our contribution margin is $20, which essentially is 41 minus 21. Very, very simple. Our fixed cost, as you see here, is $630,000. So if we were looking at our break-even, our break-even is $31,500. And what is the calculation for the break-even? Our break-even is essentially our fixed cost plus our pre-tax profit, but in this case, break even the pre-tax profit is zero, and then we divide that by the contribution margin. So when we go through this calculation, what we see is that the number of units is $31,500. Now the next question relates to the fact that what is our, the number of units if we expect to make a post-tax profit of $105,000. So we do $105,000 over here, and I think we got enough zeros here, one more zero, and we've got this. So if we want a pre-tax profit of $105,000, that means, based upon this calculation, is that we want to have an after-tax profit 
of free tax divided by 1 minus our tax rate, which is 40%. So we want to have a pre-tax profit of $175,000. The calculation that we see in terms of the number of units is essentially, and I'll walk through this a couple of uh, ways, is our fixed cost plus our pre-tax profit divided by our contribution margin. So we are essentially looking at, and in parentheses, our fixed cost plus our pre-tax profit, and that's in parentheses. And again, if it's break even, our profit is zero, therefore it's fixed cost divided by our contribution margin. And that's the calculation. So what we see here is that if we expect to receive a after-tax profit of $105,000 based upon the other variables, contribution margin and fixed cost, is that we would expect to sell, manufacture and sell 40,250 units. Okay, so let's look at the next problem. We have a couple of additional variables that we need to consider. Now, let's just kind of look through this. Is regardless of your answer in part C, and I think part C, and assume that uh, more than allowed production of $35,000 will be required to meet the $105,000. And that's what we've identified, is that we need to manufacture 40,250 units. Given the production constraint of a maximum of 35,000 units, what price must be charged to meet the targeted income and contribution and continued production past the next fiscal year. What we're looking at here is within these variables is we have a fixed cost of $630,000. We are wanting to get $105,000 in post-tax profit, after-tax profit. Therefore, our pre-tax profit has to be $175,000. But the issue becomes is that to get this based upon the constraints that we have, is that we need to sell 40,250 units. However, the problem is that the manufacturing constraint is that we can only manufacture 35,000 units. Okay, so the question becomes is what is the sales price to get a after-tax profit of $105,000? Well, we need to back into this in the way that we wanna do this is we want to add our fixed cost plus our after-tax profit, and then we want to divide this by 35,000 units. Because what this will do is this will give us our contribution margin of what we need based upon the 35,000 units. So the expected contribution margin is $23. It's now $20. So what we would want to do here is add $3 to this, which then takes this to $44. And voila, what we see here is the calculation actually ends up where we have a contribution margin of $23. Our fixed cost is $630,000. Our pre-tax profit is still $175,000. Our after-tax profit is $105,000. Therefore, the number of units that we need to manufacture is 35,000. Okay, kind of a fun problem. And um, I will post uh, this uh, Excel file into the, into the announcement. So hopefully this will help you out. So thanks a lot and have a good evening.